out here in the front yard of the monastery just after the rains have dried up a little bit. The breeze is blowing. It's kind of beautiful out here. And I just couldn't resist. I hope the wind isn't blowing too strong through the mic. But I wanted to read a Rumi poem today from a book called Rumi's Little Book of Love, which was actually given to me by a devotee uh, a couple of years ago, I think. And uh, this one was so striking. It's a very short one. It just says, from your lips, scorn is as beautiful as the ruby, holding fire in its essence. From your lips, scorn is as gentle as the breeze, caressing the flowers. I was pondering that to think, how would that be possible? And the only way for that to be possible is for scorn to come from a source of love, you know, to contemplate that. I was told when I was in high school by a an old minister friend, one of my favorite ministers of all time, actually his name was Neil Gallagher, and uh, anytime you asked Neil how he was, he'd say, uh, excellent, but I'm getting better, <laughs> which I guess is kind of a kind of a trite little thing to do, but it made an impression on me. I loved it, just that positive attitude. But what he said to me one time as a boy, and I really tried to use it as a principle, sometimes successfully, probably most of the time not. He said, you can never correct somebody beyond the point that they believe that you love them. And uh, the way that I use that is like, if I'm ever going to correct somebody or yell at somebody, or if I'm angry and I want to say something to somebody, I try and stop and ask myself, gosh, have I ever with this level of intensity told this person that I care about them or let this person know that I'm on their side? And if I haven't, I tend to decide that it's not the proper thing to say or the proper thing to do in the moment. That love has to be our measure for our motivation in things. If you look at Swami Vivekananda with some of the things he came to the West and said, you know, at a time when, when racism in America was, was certainly more pronounced than it is now, I don't know if it was any more or less existent, who can say, but uh, certainly it was more pronounced. Uh, to where uh, people dressed in a turban and uh, with brown skin like he had in that day and age uh, were not always safe. And, and you hear some of that in his travels, you know, when somebody in Chicago was poking at his turban and making fun of him. Uh, but Vivekananda said some very direct and very challenging things to us as a culture, even way back then, and I always kind of boggled my mind. How is it possible? How could he say those things and not end up getting lynched for them? <laughs> You know, yeah. and I think uh, really after after reading more of his words and 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 growing closer to to the heart of that man, I understand that he never said anything to anyone without love as the primary motive. That if he was challenging your faults, is because he genuinely wanted to see you outgrow them. He wanted to see you conquer them. Uh, if he ever said something harsh to you, or something mean to you, or something in anger to you. There was always behind it a bigger uh, facade of love, where he was really doing it for your betterment, where he was really rooting for you to come out better because of it. And I find that very challenging for myself in my own life because I'm very emotional based. You know, I, I can get I can get angry, although that's lessening with time by grace. But that notion, you know, to measure your words with love. To have, to have the self-control and at least the, the ability to separate for a moment outside of the situation that you're in, outside of the energy that it's generating, outside of the, the mental state that you're in, and check the heart. Bring the heart into everything that you do, especially if you're about to correct somebody or challenge somebody or to try and teach somebody. You know, always make sure in teaching that you understand their perspective first and fully and that they feel as if, uh, not as if, but they feel the respect that you have for their position and that you, that you have communicated the respect that you have for the effort that they have in forming that opinion or forming that idea. Because it's only with having that kind of disposition, that kind of love to surround our conversations and to surround our discussions that we're going to be able to go forward. Uh, it's very challenging in this day and age, especially with all of the division of politics, of sexualities, of cultural identities, of racism. All of these things, more and more, are demanding that we as people, we as citizens, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> we as anybody, put any adjective in there, need to really make sure that we're acting from a place of love and that we have that as an ideal and that as a goal. So do that today. Measure your conversations by love. Put it firmly in your heart and remember the source of all love for others is a healthy and secure love for yourself. Go forward. Have a great day.